All right, so it wasn't too long ago that I finally picked up this little treasure right here. And when I started using it, my mind was kind of blown at how much of an upgrade it was over the standard Fury. I know that there are a lot of builds out there that use this, and with Fury being almost a mandatory melee mod these days, that's a pretty significant upgrade. And that kind of got me thinking, how much of an upgrade are the other primed mods? And more importantly, had I maybe forgotten what the game was like without them? So I figured I'd test it. I know there are a couple of videos like this floating around out there already, but I know a lot of them are, you know, a little older, and so I figured it was worth another look. Besides, I hadn't really seen anyone out there making a specific effort to play without primed mods or gear, so I figured, at the very least, it'd make for an entertaining video. But yeah, we'll get into that more later. So let's uh let's talk about some builds. I decided to use Volt and the Fragor because they both have primed and non-prime variants, and I really wanted to get the most out of every primed mod that I could. If you're wondering where all the attention for Speed Volt on my channel lately has been coming from, this is it. I figured the synergy between speed and, you know, like every melee mod out there would help highlight any differences between the two. With quick thinking in there that should add as a little bit of a survivability bonus that hopefully would throw just the tiniest little bit of additional stress on that primed flow. Also, you'll notice that this little test didn't account for primed vigor because I, that one's still about 170 days out for me. So, you know, I guess if you guys want, we can revisit this in six months after I've got primed vigor. <laughs> For the Fragor, I threw on the standard Pressure Point, Fury, and Reach, along with Heavy Impact, which I feel is one of the few weapons that can make decent use of this mod. It's definitely not what I'd refer to as an optimal build, but, you know, I mean, it's got a lot of primed mods, and it uses them better than a lot of other melee weapons, so, you know, there's that. I decided to use Body Count and Blood Rush for the scaling and use with Naramon to keep the exercise to being primarily a test of damage against enemy scaling more than a test of my technique, which admittedly is notoriously bad. And I tried a couple of different mechanics in place of that Shattering Impact, you know, like Berserker and Organ Shatter, but Shattering Impact, even though it has a higher time to kill at lower levels, once you get to a high enough level that that armor scaling becomes an issue, it really helps to reduce the time to kill and allow you to scale further. And finally, the Life Strike is there for both the additional survivability that those heals can give, but also to place a tiny bit of additional strain on those flow mods. Now, both Volts and Fragors have been formed and modded exactly the same, with the exception that the Primed variants have Primed mods in them. And to test, I was planning on running a couple of solo survivals on MOT, you know, or, or MOT, or whatever, and recorded the final mission time. Oh yeah, and, uh, you know, just for good measure, I took it to the Simulacrum for a bit more isolated testing. This satisfies a couple of you simulacrum junkies out there because I know I know you're out there. Now, one thing of note is that when I ran the non-primed loadout, I actually had to equip a primary because one thing became really painfully clear. Without primed fury, I was not able to stay alive long enough to charge my focus ability. I tried running away, I tried CC, I tried spamming those life strike hits, I just couldn't do it, and I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe I'm just bad, but I just couldn't actually attack fast enough to get in the strikes or to get the kills that I needed to stay alive. And before we go any further, I just really quick want to draw attention to the mandatory nature of Fury. And really, honestly, I want you to think about this. Would you be upset if the 600 day login reward was a primed serration? Just a little bit of food for thought. Anyway, here are the runs. Sped up for your enjoyment. Please note that while this is a solo survival, it is not a test of my ability to stay in an endurance run. It's a comparison of how these two builds perform. If you're looking for a solo survival build, this ain't it. If you want to see some videos of me trying solo endurance runs with more appropriate builds, I'd be happy to do that, but uh, yeah, on to the test runs! <laughs>
So I mean, it's pretty clear that the primed variants outclass their vanilla counterparts, generally scaling much better and being more forgiving of mistakes in gameplay, but by how much exactly? Well, across the metrics that I measured in my limited testing, this came out to an average of 57% improvement, which I'd say is pretty significant. And once again, your mileage may vary, but here's the real kicker. Is it worth it? Is it worth all that grind? I mean, if you buy from the market, that's a 1 million credit trade tax per primed mod, another 2 million to level it up, 40,000 endo, and that doesn't count the grinding for ducats and platinum to buy them. And then there's this guy. This guy right here! Granted, if I didn't have primed fury, I would certainly be running a different build and different gear, but that brings me to the big issue here. I ranked this thing up pretty soon after I got it, and to be honest, in that short amount of time, I had literally forgotten what it was like to play melee weapons without it. It almost kind of transformed a number of melee weapons that I enjoy using, and I think a lot of people forget that not everyone has access to this mod yet when making gear or build suggestions, which wouldn't really be a big deal, except, you know. Anyway, is it worth it? Even if you're just going to rank 9 on those primed mods, which, by the way, those allow you to get almost the full benefit for half the credits and endo, I'd say that yes. Yes, it is absolutely worth it. I mean, really, you can make it through the star chart and the sorties and kuva farming and like 99% of the game with just the starter weapons and rare mods if you wanted to, because while requiring an exorbitant amount of grind, for the most part, they are attainable and not necessary for star chart or sortie completion, neither of which takes 200 days to achieve. Anyway, I did this for my own benefit more so than anyone else's, but I do hope that this helps somebody out there. I see a lot of new players asking about whether or not they should get primed gear or primed mods or whatever, and to that, my answer is to focus on 100% star chart completion first, because while they'd be nice to have earlier on, you honestly don't need them until you start doing raids, kuba floods, nightmare missions, and, and even those you can do relatively easily depending on the mission type or, you know, if you have a carry. But yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Did you find value in this video or were there more effective methods of functional playtesting that I should have done? And I really want to know what everyone's thoughts are on that whole Primed Fury thing. Like, honestly, have you forgotten how big of a difference it makes? Like, really, honestly. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, that's it. Say hi to me on Twitter. Hang out with us in Discord. Uh, my name is Joey Zero. Okay, bye.